Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So check this out. I have an RG350M, a device that cannot play Nintendo 64 games very well at all, and I'm running Super Mario 64 at full speed. So I'm pretty excited about this. I've been waiting a while to show this off. But basically, somebody took this game and they decompiled it and then rebuilt it so that it is a native port for the RG350 devices. In other words, you get to play this game as if it is a native RG350 game. So it's a really kind of cool setup. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take your original legally acquired Nintendo 64 version of Mario 64, you're going to throw it into a tool, and that'll allow you to build your own OPK, a copy of the game you already own, for your own personal use, and you'll be able to now play this on the RG350. And it works really, really well, as you can see here. So let me show you all the things you're going to need in order to get this running perfectly. So first things first, you're going to want to have a spare micro SD card. Uh, long story short, you're going to have to install the beta firmware for OpenDingux, which is the uh, firmware which is used on the RG350. So we're going to need an extra SD card because I don't want you to install this over your primary one right now. Next, you're going to need that beta firmware, and it's running really well, and they're, they're making some really good progress with it, and I'm really excited when this actually becomes the stock firmware for OpenDingux and for RG350, so we're going to keep it on that spare micro SD card. And you're also going to need a copy of Super Mario 64. Now, this is your own personal copy. Uh, you're going to want it in Z64 format. Now, let me just stress here one more time that you're taking your own personal copy, you're throwing it into a tool, and you're making a copy of it that is in OPK format that'll run on the RG350. This is not for distribution or anything else. This is just for your own personal use. So you're also going to want to use your own external micro SD card. This is the same card that you use to put all your ROMs on. All we're going to do at this point is just add the beta firmware to it, as well as your OPK of Super Mario 64. And that just kind of streamlines the process. We'll get into that here in a minute. Okay, so that's all you're going to need. So let's dive into how you're actually going to do this. First things first, let me show you. Here is the Nintendo 64 ROM here. You can see it's in Z64 format. And then you're going to go to my website, to the RG350 guide, and into the firmware guide. So you'll find the link that says how to upgrade your firmware or start from scratch. Go here, and then I will have the two different links for RG350 and RG350M stock firmware. So this is just the original firmware that comes with your device. And we're just going to download a copy of this because we're going to flash it onto that new internal SD card that we showed you earlier. takes a minute to download, but once it's downloaded, go ahead and open up the zip file. And then drag that software image over to your folder, whatever folder you're using. I'm just having a desktop folder that says Mario 64. At that point, you can actually delete the zip file. You don't need it anymore. OK, so now we have our stock firmware. So let's plug in our, in our new SD card. And you can see here, it's just a blank SD card. So we're going to use a program called Win32 Disk Imager. And this is basically just going to write that software image that we downloaded onto that disk. That's all we're doing. So what you do here is you click on the folder to pull up the image file, navigate to wherever your image is saved, and then pull it up. And then verify that it is the right file as well as the right SD card. And then you just hit the right button. And it takes a minute, and it writes that image onto your SD card. Now you have a brand new stock firmware of the RG350M. OK, once you've installed that firmware, you need to extend the Linux partition. And we're going to use an app called Disk Genius. So open up that app, go in there, and you'll find your, your disk. And it'll say primary one is the partition. And if you look, it's not filling up the entire SD card. So you just right click on it and hit resize partition, and then you move it all the way over. So this allows me to take over all 32 gigs of this internal SD card. And you don't need a 32 gig SD card. It's just the one I'm using. You could even use just maybe an 8 gig or a 16 gig. Just something like that would work just fine. 
Okay, so now we have a base stock firmware version of an internal SD card. Now this is exactly the same process you would use if you had a brand new 350 or you wanted to start over from scratch, and that's all we've done at this point. Now you can eject that disk. You're not gonna need it anymore until later on here in the video. We're good to go. So now let's work on the beta firmware. So if you go to the guide I have linked below, I'm gonna have a link to the beta firmware. And here, you're just going to click on the Nightly's uh, link, go to the download links, and from here you'll find a copy and it'll say GCW0. That's the one that works on the RG350. So you save that link. Again, just put it wherever you want. It'll take a minute to download, and there you go. So now you have your update file. And let's go ahead and delete the SD card image. We don't actually need that one anymore. Now we're just left with the Mario 64 ROM as well as the beta firmware. So now plug in your external SD card, open it up, Make sure you have an apps folder if you don't make one, and then just drag that beta firmware in. That's all you need to do. Okay, so now let's actually build the Mario 64 OPK. So again, go to my guide and I'll have a link to this page here, which will allow you to actually build the tool set and, and decompile the file and do all those things that you need to do in order to make the OPK. But they've set it up for you already, so all you have to do literally is just push a couple buttons. So first things first, you just find that first play button in the, that little snippet of code, it's called a cell, and then you just hit play on it. It'll take a few minutes to run through. The first time I did it, it took like 20 minutes, but then the second time I did it, it took like two minutes. And once it's done, you'll, you'll see that the wheel has stopped spinning and it just has the play button there. So from there, you just want to verify that the files are there. So you click on that little folder on the far left, and then you click on this SM64OD port. And then you open this up and you just verify everything looks okay. And you can hit refresh just to make sure all the files are there. But to me, it looks fine. It's just all the, the different software files you would need if you were doing this on your computer. But instead, we're doing it in a browser, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now we need to rename the Super Mario 64 ROM. And you can see here I'm using the US version, and that's what was tested on this device, so I would say use the US one if you have it. And change the file name to baserom.us.z64, and then just drag it into that folder. It'll take a minute to upload. Once it's uploaded, you're ready for the next step. You can go ahead and hit refresh, make sure it's in there. Verify that the file's there, and then you're going to go down to the next cell, which is really just one line, and then you hit the play button again. And this is actually taking that Nintendo 64 ROM, it's decompiling it, taking all the assets out of it, and then recompiling it into an OPK for you that'll run natively on the RG350. Okay, and once that's done, hit refresh on the folder again, and there it is, sm64port.opk. So just right click and download it and then put it wherever you want. I'm just going to put it back in that same old folder. And there we go. We have our own RG350 version of the game. So just pull up your external SD card, grab your OPK, and then drag it into the apps folder. I already had a copy in there from when I tested it, but that's all you have to do. All right, so let's move over to the device and actually do this. So first things first, you're going to want to take that stock firmware card that we created Put that in the left side of your RG350. And then you're going to want to take your external SD card, the one that has the beta update as well as the Mario 64 game, and put it in the right one. If you're using an RG350, obviously you're going to have to actually open up the device to swap out the firmware cards, but uh, it's worth the effort. Okay, so the first time you start up a new version of Open Dingux, uh, even if it's a stock firmware, it's going to take a minute to start up. So just give it about 30 seconds. It'll run through whatever it's doing internally. And here you are. So now you have a new version of RG350's firmware. So you'll find that OS update app. Go ahead and click on it. And then it'll tell you, hey, we're going to install a new firmware. Go ahead and press start. And then just set it down. Give it a minute, and it's going to run through all the things it needs to do. Okay, and so once it's done, you'll get this new window and just go ahead and hit OK and press Start. 
and now it'll boot into this new beta firmware, which is actually a really exciting firmware. It has a lot of cool things involved. For example, you're going to be able to just plug your device into your computer and, and, and access your SD card without having to use FTP or any of those other things. It has a sleep mode. It has all these other cool things. At this point, all you want to do is navigate over to the Games tab, and then you'll find your Super Mario 64 game. And it starts right up. So a couple things about this game, it doesn't support like save states. It literally is playing the game natively, right? And so when you need to save the game, you have to save it the old way that you used to on the Nintendo 64. You're going to wait for a save spot and you're going to hit save. There's no save states or anything on it. But other than that, it runs perfectly. If you look at the guide that I have linked below, you can actually see that I have instructions on how to remap the buttons in case you don't like the way they're mapped out. So really, you know, the, the world's your oyster at this point. You get to play the game however you want. You can map the buttons however you want and it's running at full speed. This is really a kind of cool project and I think you really are going to enjoy it and honestly it's just kind of cool. You know there are a couple downsides for example you have to use a new internal SD card uh, with the new beta software uh, but you know I'm just kind of thinking of this as my Mario 64 card if that makes any sense. So I really do think it's worth that effort. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.